thank you for renting our our pod uh, you pulled up you're ready to hook up to your vehicle and I'm going to show you how you do that so you have a few basic pieces uh, pretty straightforward let me show you okay so what you when you pull up you're going to have a trailer lock which is this red part right here um, and then um, you have chains and electrical and and then your electric jack so on this specific model there uh, it's an electric jack and I'll, I'm gonna show you how to run all these so the first thing is removing this electric jack or excuse me the the trailer lock so you get the black key you're gonna get a lanyard you have a purple one which is to the door black which is to the trailer lock and these are to the compartment cubbies in the front of the trailer on the exterior that you store uh, your storage bins so we'll get the black um, but first remove the pin set that on your bumper oh uh, <coughs> put in the key like that like so turn it pop, pop it off now it's not going to come off yet because the trailer latch is still holding it this in so lift it up trailer ball comes out and then just slide it back on and then you're going to store this and then anytime that you are away from your trailer at the campsite you're disconnecting from your trailer you're going to leave for the day you'll put it back on just remember it's just held on by that trailer latch. So now <clears throat> you're pulled up. Now you need to get on the, the ball. You want to keep the ball as directly. So the mistakes I see most common is when you pull this ball, I'm just going to show you, too far back. And then th it pushes this latch up and it gets all kind of ski wampus. So um, ideally you just barely want the, the ball to be very much on the forward part of the ball. You want it just to land right in that middle so where it, it can cup that between this latch and the front of the, uh, of the, where the ball just receiver just hits perfectly. So then this is slightly confusing, but it says up and down. Up is to raise the raise it up, down lowers it. Um, so, I mean, it's not confusing, but it's, you just hit the down button. And as you can see, it's, it begins lowering right on top. And it's gonna slide right on. Keep lowering it and lowering it. And take all the weight. Still is not. Oh, sorry. Get out of that. Up. That's the. <laughs> Let me go up. If you, you see the mist, that's exactly what you're going to see if you don't put the latch up, or sometimes if you don't hit it perfectly. So that's it. See, there, see how that popped? Now it's going to make space, and now I can drop it, and you can see that's going to receive it all the way on top onto the ball. As you can see, this is going to start lowering. There's a red line, and you can see that it's gonna lift off. Don't raise the jack beyond the red line. Go up to the red line, but do not exceed the red line. If you do that, you will blow a fuse, and then manually, you'll have to crank it. Um, I'm going to put fuses, and I'll show you how to do a fuses if you blow the fuses, but you then lower that, lower the latch, Place the safety pin in and over. That, and see how it locks. <clears throat> Here is where the safety latches are stored. Just take those, doesn't matter which side, and then hook them to your trailer. On both sides, or excuse me, to your vehicle. On both sides. There you go, like so. And then you hook. So just come to the other side. This red cord is your emergency trailer brake and only will be pulled if you 
um, that for some reason the vehicle separates from the trailer down the freeway. Hook this to your vehicle. Excuse me. Like, like so. So that stays like that. Um, and then lastly is to hook up your electrical cable. And that is a seven, seven prong. If you happen to have a four prong, you'll need to use an adapter that takes it from a four prong to a seven prong. But that hooks in to your power like so. And that hooks in. And this one handed is hard. And it hooks in. The trick though is to push it far enough in. There you go. That there's a latch that just goes just past the latch. And that's far enough. This is important. So in travel, sometimes the door will fling open. So in order to prevent that from happening, you need to lock the you need to lock the door, but most importantly, you need to lock the deadbolt. So this this is the door lock, and it's locked by turning it to the right. And then it, the deadbolt, make sure you turn it. So that's not locked straight up. You need to turn it all the way to the left, and that will lock the deadbolt, and then you can open it up. Try opening the door. You can see that it won't it won't open. In the event that you blew a fuse, you have to pop this off, and there's a 30 amp fuse, and they'll uh, the replacements will be in a black box in the cubby, in the front cubby. I'll show you where that is, but just know if you blow a fuse and the electric jack does not work, that's what you're gonna change. In the event that you can't find fuses, you will pop this off, this top off, down in there. You see there's a, um, a hex head. If you wanna grab me the hex head wrench and it's in here. So fuses. And can you grab this? All right. In here, you will grab this. By the way, this is where the fuses will be, which is in the which is in the cubby. Okay. So, if for some reason you if the jack doesn't work, you can do it the old-fashioned way. Like this, you can see it? And then you just crank it like that, and that raises and lowers the jack. So, but you just probably won't need that. You'll have fuses in the event that you need to change that and then pop that back on. So, I'll, I'll put that back in a second, but that's where that goes. Okay, and then before you go, make sure you remove the chocks which are on both sides of the tires that sometimes requires you to back up to relieve pressure and then put the chocks in the cubby and you're ready to go except one exception this is important so in travel sometimes the door will fling open so in order to prevent that from happening you need to lock the you need to lock the door but most importantly, you need to lock the deadbolt. So this this is the door lock, and it's locked by turning it to the right. And then it, the deadbolt, make sure you turn it. So that's not locked straight up. You need to turn it all the way to the left, and that will lock the deadbolt, and then you can open it up. Try opening the door. You can see that it won't, it won't open. And then as a last precaution, let me so I guess you can see this. As a last precaution, lift the handle up and towards, and it'll keep the door closed just in case um, there's a the door does open up. And then make sure to do a quick walk around the trailer. Make sure there's nothing that's stopping you from going, and you're good to go. We'll see you at the campsite. <laughs> Okay, if you're using stabilizer bars for your trailer 
or for your uh, for your vehicle. Um, what's the the purpose of these? If you're, if you're using this, is to stop for the swing motion when you're going down uh, the road, or from it fishtailing. Um, it's not required, uh, but if you have opted for this, I'm going to show you how to install uh, stabilizer bars uh, onto your vehicle and then onto the trailer. So first step, two steps. This first step is attaching it to your uh, vehicle. Come on down. Pull the cotter pin. It's a little heavy. It's easier if you cross them so you can get a hold of it easy. Put it into your receiver. If you have two circles on your <coughs> two holes on your hitch, put it to your receiver, put it on the furthest hole so there's more um, there's more bar going into the receiver. And then simply attach the locking mechanism in and again put in this the pin and then you're ready to uh, now attach it to your uh, to the trailer. And now let's go I'm gonna go back up to it and I'll show you what that'll look like. Okay, now you have the stabilizer hitch on your vehicle. You have it attached just like a normal hitch. Um, make sure the latch from the trailer lock latch is securely in place. Um, now, the trick is you've got to get, let me show you, come down close. This bar needs to get um, on top of this L bracket. So I removed this um, this pin and bracket, and uh, I'll show you how this is installed in a second. But you can see it's there's a long way for it to go to get on top of that. There is this leverage bar. Um, however, this is not necessarily required if you use the jack. So what you do again? It's firmly on the. Uh, the ball is secured with the trailer latch ball locked in place. Um, now it seems counter. You've lowered the jack or the trailer onto the onto the ball, but now you're going to raise it back up. Which, in doing so, and you'll hear the the motor start to grind a little bit because you're picking up essentially the the car and the trailer. But what you're doing, ever so slowly, is you're gaining height where you can just use your hand. So it's gonna be putting more pressure, more pressure, lifting and lifting until you're at a point where it slides right over, no problem. So now you can see I have the height to put it on the L bracket. Take the aluminum L bracket and it goes on top of the stabilizer arm bar. Don't do it like this. See, do it so the aluminum bracket goes over the top of the stabilizer bar arm and then lock it with a pin. <clears throat> You'll do the exact same thing on the other side. If it needs to be raised higher, simply raise the jack higher and you'll gain the elevation needed to um, overcome the, the, the distance and the gap to raise it over the L bracket arm. Once you secure the other side, you then lower the jack and it'll evenly distribute the weight and completely, um, it'll, it'll, you can, you're ready to go. Now, however, when you get to camp, you have to do the reverse order. If, if it went, you have to raise the jack up to re remove the pressure because you won't be able to do it. But in the event that there's so much pressure, raise the jack up pull it off. If you want to use the stabilizer arm bar you wear with this little leverage tool, put it underneath and into this little groove in the hole and, and simply pry up like so. So those are your two ways to install the stabilizer arms.
Okay, you've arrived at the campsite. It's ready to set up. The, 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 the most important part about setting up the camp is making sure your trailer is level. Uh, and, I, and I've installed on this trailer um, a level. And it, and it does both ways. So let me show you real quick. So you can see that that silver metallic bubble is what's going to tell you if you're level or not. Now I'm level. I'm in my driveway. It's level. Um, but this will, will level the trailer left and right. And how you do that will be with um, you chalk, you lift the tires, roll onto um, some Lego blocks to raise the trailer left or right. Now, to, to, to get it to go up and to get it level the other way, which um, you can see that's not level, you're going to use the jack by raising it higher or lower to get it level. So... In order, but the first thing you're going to do is level it left and right. I've placed it that maybe you can see it from your rear view mirror. Uh, and you're going to have somebody uh, back up. But how to do that, depending on which direction you need to go, you're going to open up the this forward storage container. Make sure before you travel always to lock both of these. Um, it'll make your travel easier. And those are just magnetic. They just lock up straight. But these Lego blocks, as I call them, I don't know if they're actually called Lego blocks. <clears throat> so what you're going to do is get pretty close to where you need to be and then set it down like so. And then you're going to set it on like that. See? And then you can drive your rig up on that. If you need to go higher, or you can drive the trailer you could add another i've added more legos that you can add it higher uh the, the, uh, the more you need and you just drive and put your tra trailer right on top of it now i have it chalked in my driveway so i'm not gonna be able to show you that but just you drive on top of it and ray and just drive to the point that you need it. it might not be all the way on top of it it might be just um a half to three quarters or even a quarter on the way on top or maybe you just need one but you can use um two befores or other things to drive on it to, to make it level i just provide these lego blocks so once you get it leveled left and so you get it level left and right as i'm calling it left and right then you want to do uh, this other direction with this other smaller bubble and you're going to do that by now you can start disconnecting the trailer so I'm hand this over and now uh, you can you just disconnect everything i'd say the trickiest part about the, disconnecting the trailer Now there's a place for all of these, so when you pull the place, just put them in their spots. Even the electrical cord has a spot. I pulled it from it, so you'll see there's a little spot for it. And just start raising it up. And as you raise it up, sometimes it sticks on the front of it. And the reason why is there's pressure. Sometimes you can step on it a little bit if you like but sometimes it'll bind on you and the reason it's binding is sometimes you'll need to back up just a teeny bit to take the pressure off the front as it's kind of sticking there's, a, there's it sticks there just a little bit but you raise it all the way up and you can see it's coming off i won't show you all the way to level but you'll, you'll raise this high enough until this bubble the, this little smaller bubble uh, becomes level. Uh, so then you're level left and right. Um, you're disconnected from your trailer when you decide you want to leave your trailer. Oh, sorry. Now, let me put that down, down here. Pull out your black box again. And you now get to roll your, your, your uh, put down your stabilizers. So the trailer, um, is now level, but once you go in it, if you don't put the stabilizers down, it'll just be kind of wobbly. 
So let me show you back here. There's four stabilizers. I'm going to show you on this one right here. Um, you grab this, but it's got a hex head on the end of it. So this hex head driver, and you just start twisting it clockwise to lower it. And as you can see, I'm lowering it. And then you'll get to the bottom. It'll t hit the ground and you'll feel tension. And I usually go uh, half, three quarters of a turn, half till it's snug, maybe even full. And that's it. And you'll do that on all four uh, levels or your leveling jacks. Or stabilizer jacks is what they're called. Not leveling jacks, stabilizer jacks. Then to put the, put, to, put, to put the stairs down, pull it out straight, up in a little bit down and you're ready to set up camp. Okay, now I'm going to show you some of the exterior features of the R-Pod. Um, how to dump, how to hook up to city connection, um, how to hook up, how to fill up the water, fresh water tank, and how to hook to power. So let's the only thing on this side that I want to show you is if you're going to dump. So I'm going to show you how to dump your black and gray water. So it is time you pulled up to your spot where you're going to dump your black water. So you're going to need this blue hose that I pulled from uh, from the from that front uh, storage area. You're going to hook this ho this this hose this blue hose to the black tank flush so you pop that off and then you screw your hose into the end of that like so i can't do it one-handed but imagine that that goes in there and then hook the other end there's going to be a hose wherever you're hooking up and what that's going to allow uh to do is, is and so you hook that up don't turn it on yet but it's hooked up to the black black tank flush now go to the other side of the trailer. And I'm gonna show you, there's two spots uh, for your gray and your black. Um, so waste water holding tank is your gray water. And how you operate that is you're just going to, they, you, these don't, tw I mean you can twist them, that's not gonna do anything. It, you pull them um, away from the pipe and that opens the valve that allows the gray water now this gray water is your is your kitchen water your uh your uh bathroom uh faucet water um typically this is not you know you, you could release this frankly uh at your site if they allow it um and just so you know to carry the weight it's no there's no problem with this so there's that and then there's <clears throat> the sewer outlet connection same concept you have to pull it out away from the pipe to get it and so i'm gonna show you how to hook that up uh, whether you're at the at a koa or, or some kind of full hookup campground or if you're dumping at the end of your trip so what you're going to do is come to the bumper at the back of the trailer and in order to open this you have to squeeze so what you do squeeze and pull it off that's how you get it off so you reach in here and you grab out your hose now this hose is for demonstration purposes um some ha I, I will have probably one that has an end on it that hooks easier into the uh wherever you're going to be dumping city or, or i mean not a city but whether you're in an RV dump or you're in a, in a KOA-like campground. So how it connects to your, how it connects, let me show you over here. Well, that's okay, right here, here's your Open it up by just twisting slightly. It comes off like so. And then there's just hooks. And you just twist it over the hooks. And then you run this end to the RV dump site or the KOA have something similar and that just goes into the hole. Then you will 
pull. Then you'll have, then you'll turn the water in, water on, which is the on the other side the blue hose hooked into the black black water flush. And then it, what that does is activate sprinklers that are inside the black water tank and just and, and just purge and just send a bunch of water to flush it out. Turn that on, open up the valve, and then you'll, and sewer will then begin to go into uh, into the RV dump. We'll run that. Let it run for a few minutes until the water becomes clear. Turn the water off, let it run a little bit longer. Sometimes if you have excess hose, you have to lift the hose up and get the water to go down into the RV dump. And then close the valve, open it up, and put the cap back on. Not too tight, just to, so it, just to, to get to it. Uh, there's, there's ball, you can see there's a little, um, on this, don't break these. These are these will break if you twist it too hard. Just enough to get it to click. To firm, that's it. And so you dump. If you to hook up your power, um, if you're at, you have to, you have to use these adapters. This will be in the black box uh, where all the other accessories are, and. Uh, this right here, the back of the, the driver side, back of the trailer, is where you use this adapter. It's there's only one way to do it. You can't uh, you can't screw it up. Just line up the line it up and twist it to the right, and then twist on this last black um, cap, and then you can hook in either you can do this at home while you're charging, or if you rented a generator. Uh, you can do it with, um, so get in. So generator or your or your home power. Your char your your trailer. The trailer also charges while it's hooked up to your vehicle. It's running and going down the road. Also, we'll include it if you do not have an extension cord. Uh, this will be in the black box. Um, this will allow you to hook to the generators. When you this orange end fits perfectly uh, onto the uh, receptor, receptor, the electrical receptor. However, on the other end, you'll need to use an adapter. If you've rented the generators, you will need the adapter. It's a small little black adapter that will most likely be on the generator, but if not, it'll be in the black box that will allow you to connect this male end to the generator's female end. Okay, now I'm going to explain generator use. Um, two generators are required to run the full capacity of the trailer, uh, which primarily the biggest voltage pole is the uh, air conditioner. It's a big uh, hog. Everything else though, uh, the microwave, the fr not even the fridge, the fridge is running gas, but um, outlets, anytime you need to use the, those type of um, uh, power source, is uh, going to be one one generator is enough but if you need to run air conditioners you're going to require both generators um, and so let me show you quick how these generators work the biggest mistake i see if you look on top here when i store them i store them off and when you travel um, when you're ready to turn them on turn it to the on button and then there's a side button right here engine on choke it and now you're ready to pull it Fires up, choke off. There's an eco mode on the front if you want. That'll keep it at a low idle until it, there's a power pull. Otherwise, it runs at a higher RPM. I usually use it on eco off. Now I'm gonna turn this off so you can hear me. I just turned the engine switch off. And then again, when you're, you're bringing it um, home, make sure this is on off. That'll keep gasoline from spilling outside the seal. Again, when you're starting it, make sure it's on. Otherwise, it will start, run for about five minutes, and then die. Okay, so you're gonna you want to run your air conditioner unit. You have to you have to hook, use a, a parallel cable to hook it up. There's three colors: red, green, black. It says right here. There's instructions in the in the bag. This, by the way, is found in the black box in the cubby of the trailer. So left, there's these little ports that goes in the left, blacks on the left, 
reds in the right. There's even little markers that say left and right to help you in case you forget. These are the easiest parts. So again, black is left, red is right. Then I put it included a screwdriver and you have to put the ground, you have to unscrew, unscrew the Phillips. I'm just gonna do one side for demonstration. Slide it on and tighten it with the Phillips screwdriver till it's snug. Do that to both sides. Again, that's gonna be connected. Now you can start both of them up. Doesn't matter which one. When they're both running, you're then gonna hook the power up to the trailer. Using this very heavy cord, this gauge is designed to carry any electricity pull from the trailer to the generator. You have to use this adapter. This adapter will be in the black box in the cubby. Um, sometimes it's in, it's, some people leave it in here, but usually it's in the cubby, but um, you plug the, push the adapter in and then the power cord. And then you run this uh, other end to the trailer. And this is on the pass or the driver's side back end is where you're gonna find the, the electrical port. Um, that's how you're gonna run the generators. You don't have to, run, again, only have to run one if you're doing anything other than air conditioner. Air conditioner requires both. If for some reason you wanna charge it at your home, um, you can use this adapter that you would put on the trailer. So plug, plug in the trailer and then it, it adapts to a normal extension cord. Um, however, I would recommend not using a thicker gauge cord and not running a long distance, otherwise you'll trip the breaker on your home. Um, no damage to the trailer, but something to be aware of. And that is how you set up generators. So two ways to get fresh water into your trailer. If you're at a KOA-like uh, camp, you'll be hooking up to the, the city's pressurized system. There is an inherent risk with that, um, and that is if the city's pressure is higher than the R-Pod's um, pipe tolerance, you could possibly blow out the fittings and cause the trailer to leak. So what I've included in the trailer is this pressure regulator. And this pressure regulator will fit between the city's pressure so you, if you look right here, it says city water connection. So this is the this is where you would hook up the city water connection. So you're just going to twist that on like so, and then that will li limit the pressure that the that, so the city's pressure. Then you hook the city's pressure or, or line into this orange piece, this orange receiver, and that's how um, you hook up the city water. Now, if you not at a KOA light, light camp and you want fresh water, to fill up a 35 gallon fresh water tank, it's just simply, simple, it's, just a, it's called the fresh water, connect, water connection. Take your garden hose, put it in that black tube, and just turn on your water. It usually takes um, 20 minutes for it to fill up a 35 gallon tank. Um, at the end, if you, at the end of the day, uh, and you want to drain that, and you don't want to, to, to carry it home, uh, you can, if you look underneath here, this blue water right here, blue water, you can t just simply hand twist it, and you can twist off and let water out, if you choose to do that. Uh, I'll show you. See water starting to come out? It's just, and then hand tighten it, back up no need to use a wrench and that is the fresh water okay one last thing before you go we go inside the trailer and show you um, everything you need to know inside this is the propane so in the event that you do not, you're gonna, it's gonna be turned on, it's gonna be run the fridge. You can run the, the, the fridge. It usually takes several hours to cool down the fridge, um, but for some, whatever reason, this is the control panel, the access panel, to turning on and off the propane. Very simple, locks up, you'll have pro pro propane, but if you need access for some reason, that's where the propane is. So let's go inside, and I'm gonna show you 
the inside of the trailer. As you can see, before we go in, this is the awning. I'm gonna show you how to do that, but I wanted to show you where that's at. Okay. Okay, go right here. This is, um, you have two control panels, actually. So uh, the first one that you see is your interior light. So if you turn the interior light on, um, you see that it turns on a couple lights or, and you can turn those off if you want and decide how many lights that you want on when you come into your trailer. But well, that's just your first light. Your second light is your porch light on. Now that one is that guy. So I'm turning it on and off, okay? Porch light. I'm gonna show you the awning LED in one second. Um, but then, and then and your slide in and out. I am not level, so I can't, sh I'm not gonna ex fully extend the um, slide out, but how you would do that is you would hit slide out, hold it down, you hear it starts making a noise. That's as far as I'm gonna go. You run that all the way out until it just stops. Um, there's nothing for else for you to do. It's very easy and intuitive. And then when you're done, slide it in, push the button in, you hear it make, a, it make some noise, and then it, you'll listen, and that's it. It just stops. Now the awning, if you want to extend the awning, hit the extend, I'm gonna start extending it, and then you will see that the awning will extend out. While it's extending, I'm gonna tell you a few features to, to, to in for consideration awning. The awning, although it has these beefy, sturdy arms, if you have a big gust of wind, you will cause damage to these awnings. And they can catch winds just like those easy ups you always see. Whoops. So just take it to the end and then roll it back a little bit. You can't over, there you go, till the, till the flap comes down. That's it. Now, you can um, pull down to adjust the pitch. So if I pull this down, it'll pull the pitch down. See how that, if, I, if, if the sun or the level, I can pull that down and it just locks lower. But just stays, it's, it's just in one handed, very easy and very intuitive. You'd obviously do the other side. I'm also gonna show you if you want to run the LEDs, the LED, flip the, this on, and then you have this cool, ambi oh, this cool ambient lighting, which I think is super cool. Um, so anyway, to turn, I'm going to turn those off, and then I'm going to retract the awning by hitting, pushing the button down, and as you see, the awning will come in. I recommend keep if it's windy. Um, if you're out using it, extend it and use it. And at night, put it away. I wouldn't just leave it at all times because you can very easily damage these awnings. Um, they are beefy, but they can be uh, they can be ruined pretty easy. So, I, so awnings in. Now let's move over to the second control panel. This is the status of your trailer. So I'll show you what you got here. So if you want to get a status of your gray, how full your gray is, you push the gray button, see, and that says it's empty. Black water, empty. Fresh water, it's a third. Um, you can, another thing to consider, you can pull that full or empty, it's up to you, depending on your rig, If you, it'll just affect your gas mileage. And then battery. This can be deceptive. If it's charging or hooked up to the battery, it, it'll show full every time. If you want a true gauge of your battery level, um, disconnect it from the source that's charging it and it'll show you what your actual battery. We have, I have six volt deep cycle batteries, which usually last three days um, of general use. Okay, water pump. If you want to, anytime you want to turn on a faucet, uh, use the toilet, shower, you got to turn the water pump on. And, and you can almost, you can hear it running. Well, you probably can't hear it, but that turns on the water and you can see that turns on the water okay if for some reason you leave your water pump if you leave it off and you run your water it won't run the water for you have some residual pressure in the lines and it'll run for a few uh seconds maybe 30 se 20 seconds but it just diminishes um water heater um, to do the water heater, you click the button, and notice the fault button comes on. 
Um, what that does is it's lighting the water tape, the water heater, and it usually takes uh, two to five minutes. Um, that the five minutes is long. A couple of minutes, see the fault went off, that means it's lit and it's going. And it takes uh, anywhere from five to 10 minutes to get it fully, fully hot. It's a five gallon um, tank. Um, turn the water pump on to make sure, uh, at the same time to make sure that water heater is full. So that is your control panels. I'm gonna show you the fridge. The fridge is, it runs on gas. So, as you can see, if red, check glass, it's once I have the gas on and you turn it on, you turn it on by pushing that button and you can see that lights on. I know it's, there it goes, it's blinking. It Sometimes if it's the beginning of the season, which if it is, um, you can reset it a couple times if the gas hasn't reached the line, but it runs on gas. Again, it takes several hours to cool down. So don't be discouraged if you just turn it on and 30 minutes later, it still doesn't feel like it's cooler. It takes a teeny bit of time. Um, let me show you the rest of the trailer. Anytime you, everything can run on battery. So lights will run on battery. Um, the water pump, obviously the heater will run on, uh, the battery. And for this model, the TV will run on battery. Also running on the battery. There are USB chargers on both sides of the bed. Those also run on battery. Everything else, which means the air conditioner, the oven, microwave, outlets, any outlets, require you to run. There's something running here. Sorry. Oh, there it is. Anything else was, will require you to connect to a generator or the city power. If you're on city power in the KOA light camp, you do not have to worry about... Um, you'll have power into the whole rig all the time. Okay, what heater? There's a thermostat, well, a heater or air conditioner. So you can see here, it's 79 degrees and it says off. And to so you set your your temperature, whatever you want it to be. You can arrow up. Well, it's off. So you hit mode. Let's say we want to. The first mode is. Let's say you want heat, tip, heat is typically what people use, and then, you, and then you arrow to where you want it, you know, wherever, he, wherever your comfort level is, and then leave it alone, and it will, you know, it'll heat to that level. Um, <clears throat> it gets hot, so the cooler the better for me personally, but it's a personal preference. And then again, that big um, keyboard or space bar type button is how you cycle through mode so now it's off as you can see i push it again fan if i want to turn the fan on i leave it it'll turn the fan on um you can hear it just clicked on and if i don't and you can hear it to high and then air conditioner and again you just leave it you now i'm gonna turn it back to off anytime that you want air conditioner you need to run the generators as meant and you need to hook up the tandem generators if you only want to use your plug use the plugs or outlets um you can use just one generator. Um, otherwise, you need to use two. This is your stereo. It's hooked to Bluetooth, so you can also connect it via uh, Bluetooth. The uh, if it, the Bluetooth code is zero 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 zero. If it asks you, usually it just connects automatically. But if it asks, it's four zeros. Inside is the and here's the bathroom. Light light switch right there. Um, you've got your fan, which is super quiet, but you open it, something to be considered, you can actually lock it, so twist it you want, and then, and then push it, now it's locked, or, and then when you're done, if you, if it's at night, or you're traveling, uh, you know, twist it, lock it, fan, you just push, you know, push the fan on to whatever you like, super quiet, super easy, um, here's your, here's your bathroom with your shower, um, I would, 35 gallons takes 20 minutes to fill up, but it feels like the, the water goes in like 30 seconds. So use your water conservatively, it goes fast. So hot water, cold water, this turns on the wand. If it's me, I get the setting to I want, and then I use turn this on and off when I, when I need water. Uh, I'll get wet, lather up, and then 
turn, use this to turn the water on and off to rinse off. And that's how I take a conservative shower. But whatever you want, whatever works for you. So that is, oh, blinds are just pull down. Just grab them, pull them down. Windows, you just pull open. There's just a latch you pull out. And then you just push and then cabinet that's that is um that is the interior in, oh to make the bed so it comes with a table if you want to convert this to a bed um you just have to simply pull take your hand grab underneath and pull and the whole bed just shifts just lays flat if you want to put it back to a couch lift on lift up and push it down and it goes back up it goes back down and you have a couch again. And that, I believe, is the inside. All right, one last thing. The, the toilet, to flush the toilet and just fill it with water, it's a foot. So step on it. Make sure the water pump is on. Push it halfway down and it fills it up with water. And then to flush, you push the, 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 the pedal to the floor. That's it.